If your credit card bills have gotten out of hand, call Consolidated Credit now. If you're making the minimum payments, but your balance is just not going down, call Consolidated Credit now. If the interest rates on your credit cards are so high, it will take years to get out of debt, call Consolidated Credit now. They've helped over 5 million people with credit card debt. They can consolidate your debts into one lower payment, reduce your interest rates, and get you out of debt fast. If you're struggling with credit card debt, the first step is your Call Consolidated Credit now. Call 800-463-1749. 800-463-1749. That's 800-463-1749. Consolidated Credit Counseling Services Incorporated, 5701 West Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33313. Not a loan company. Licensed by the New York Department of Financial Services or by the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation. Maryland DM19, Oregon DM80031. Licensed by the Virginia State Corporation Commission. License number DC32. What kingdom has sent you? The kingdom of the Most High. Any investment discussed on Wall Street Law is presented for educational purposes only. We strongly recommend you seek out a competent, licensed professional for advice. Nothing you have ever experienced can prepare you for the unbridled carnage you're about to witness. The Super Bowl, the World Series, they don't know what pressure is. In this building, it's either kill or be killed. You make no friends in the pits and you take no prisoners. One minute, you're up half a million in soybeans and the next, boom, your kids don't go to college and they've repossessed your bed. Talk Radio is proud to present Wall Street Raw with TV's Wall Street Week elf and nationally recognized market timer, Mark Leibovit, who welcomes you on board his financial time machine. And here is the elf himself, Mark Leibovit. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining Wall Street Raw and Mark Leibovit on this Saturday, uh, September 16th. No other day like it. And uh, we have a very interesting show for you again uh, this Saturday. A lot of action this past week in the markets. And, uh, of course, coming up uh, next week, we've got some interesting uh, cyclical events. So you've got the autumnal equinox coming in on the 22nd next Friday. Sometimes there's change of directions in the market around these key uh, natural events. And we also have Rosh Hashanah coming up on the 21st, 22nd, next Thursday and Friday as well. Eric Haddock will be joining us in just a moment again for an encore interview. Uh, Sinclair No will be joining us later in the program along with our very good friend Henry Weingarten and uh, Harry Boxer. And we also have uh, Kyle Dennis joining us again from RagingBull.com. So we're trying to keep you on top of the uh, markets and we have a lot to get to caught up here with here this week particularly since uh, we're in this uh, treacherous, supposedly treacherous uh, September time frame where the market is doing just the opposite and pushing into new uh, record highs. So let's, um, let's join Eric. Welcoming back my good friend Eric Haddock from the Inside Track newsletter. He's been with us uh, many times. I've known Eric for many, many years. Eric's been doing this nearly 40 years. Uh, he's been a publisher, market commentator in both the uh, stock and commodity markets. He founded the Inside Track letter back in 1994, though, as I said, he's been doing this a lot longer than that, and he's been interviewed in all the major television networks, and it was a really pleasure having him on the show. He starts his uh, letter off his byline, let us run with patience the race that is set before us from Hebrews 12.1, and I know he has a, a biblical perspective and a lot of what he follows, but uh, a lot of it is also technical. Thank you for joining us, Eric. Well, thanks for having me back, Mark. My pleasure. Well, I'm really happy to have you on the show ahead of the Rosh Hashanah holiday coming up pretty soon, and uh, um, you've done a great job in calling the markets. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what's going on right now. We're in this uh, seasonal uh, negative period in the markets, uh, but you might be seeing something um, a little more dire after this time frame from what I'm reading. Well, I, I'm certainly seeing or expecting a few phases of some, some selling in the equity market. Uh, I kind of elaborated on this decennial period that, you know, that's fairly well recognized, but uh, really, if you go back over the last 
um, 16 decades, 13 of them have seen uh, pretty significant selling during the seven year and leading into the eight year of the decade. And a lot of my corresponding technicals and cycles were telling me to look for the same thing. But taking it a little more specifically, as I looked at those previous periods and some uh, really in the last 20 years, there's been a two-year and a three-year cycle that have timed similar third quarter stretching into the fourth quarter uh, sell-offs in the market. Uh, I really identified the overall time period that presented the greatest danger from July through November, and then within that period, there's three specific periods I was watching for uh, kind of a slow uh, intensification of selling, first in late July to into August 18th to the 22nd, uh, which we've already seen that. Probably the Russell 2000 showed the, the greatest sell-off, dropping about 100 basis points during that period. And the second one of those decennial danger periods, what I call them, is between September 5th and 29th, so I am watching for uh, another sign of a downturn here in the at any time. And I think we'll see a another bout of selling. And then I could see a, a more sustained or more convincing sell-off a little bit uh, later in the year, uh, stretching into the fourth quarter. I know analysts have been talking about a top here for months, and the market's been climbing that proverbial wall of worry, nothing but bad news, and continually makes new highs. So uh, you might see a break in that pattern is what you're saying. Yeah, I, I think so, and, and yes, it certainly has held up longer than uh, longer than expected in many regards. So let's talk a little bit about the other markets here. I know crude oil and uh, gold are uh, very popular among our uh, listeners. Uh, great call in gold, and you're still bullish. Yeah, I had thought that gold would be in a bottoming process, uh, starting in late 2015 when cycles bottomed. Then I was looking for a secondary low, a little bit of a higher low in late 2016. And then as we came into 2017, I thought we would see a sequence where you see about a four-month rally to start the year, then about a two-month sell-off. And if that uh, un unfolded as expected, that would yield a mid-2017 low that was higher than uh, both the late 2016 and late 2015 lows. And each of these subsequent lows should be on a, a steeper angle to the upside. And that that mid-2017 time frame should usher in a more convincing bull market in gold starting in the third quarter. Uh, but really, the uh, the more accelerated, more sustained uh, portion of that uh, is still out on the horizon. And as far as crude oil, that has kind of coincided with uh, the outlook in gold that uh, since early 2016, when multi-year cycles bottomed, I've talked about looking for a one- to two-year bottoming process, and that cycles would not really turn bullish until September, October of 2017, so we have just entered that period. And even that doesn't mean that, you know, I expect it suddenly to, to go to the moon. It just means that uh, instead of a more flat lateral bottoming process on the charts, you start to see things angle to the upside. You're also right that uh, you feel that Middle East cycles are going to see a little bit of escalation of uh, tensions here uh, this month. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Well, I have. Uh, that's been one of overriding cycles that I've discussed for uh, a decade or so, and just the uncanny convergence of cycles I was expecting to really initially get triggered between September 2017 through September 2018. Um, and, and when I'm talking about the Middle East, I pay as much attention to uh, the Jewish calendar and the Jewish years um, and, and cycles between them. And for me, I was looking for September 2017 to kind of usher in a, uh, a more precarious, potentially tumultuous period in the, in the Middle East. And uh, so it, it was interesting to me, too, to just read the headlines yesterday, I think it was, of um, Israel bombing a Syrian chemical plant. Um, and, and so, you know, is that a, uh, a first salvo in something bigger or just a, a one-off thing? Uh, but also seeing the, um, the movement towards, you know, Trump sending Kushner and, and that uh, group of 
uh, diplomats to the Middle East to kind of lay the groundwork for another round of peace talks, uh, although ironically, many of those peace talks in the past have coincided with an escalation of, of attacks back and forth. So the two kind of go hand in hand, and they seem to be corroborating these cycles. Eric, we ran out of time. Uh, Eric Haddock from the Inside Track newsletter. If our listeners want to get in touch with you, it's InsideTrack.com with two eyes in the inside, correct? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> it's I N S double I D E Inside Track. Thank you and Shana Tova to you, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, thank you, Eric. And uh, speaking of Israel and the Middle East, I hope you caught that interview here in the last week or two with our good friend Bill Koenig, the White House correspondent. We may do an encore play of that as well, and particularly talking about his book, Eye to Eye, which is uh, you know a classical piece in my opinion, and what's going on in terms of uh, natural disasters and the uh, and the state of Israel. In fact, I, as a mental note here, I'm going to send uh, Eric Haddock a copy of that here after the show because I think he'd be very interested in that. Meanwhile, um, as I mentioned, we have a jam-packed show for you here today, and we're going to have my good friend uh, you know, Sinclair uh, No joining us uh, in just a moment. And uh, but first, Henry. Uh, uh, Weingarten and Kyle Dennis in segment two, so don't touch your dial. You're listening to Wall Street Raw with Mark Leibovitz. Go to WallStreetRawRadio.com for information on Mark's newsletters and products. Stay tuned. Mark will be right back. I'm now convinced more than ever that we're just one major headline away from the next market crisis. Guess what? A new timeline report that I just read says that I happen to be right. Something big is getting ready to happen, just like it does at least once a decade over the last hundred years. An energy crisis in 79, an SNL crisis in 89, and the last two I warned you about, remember? The dot-com bust in 99 and the subprime crisis in 09. What's next? I want you to call for a free copy of Swiss America's new timeline report. Thanks, Michael. Call toll-free 888-732-7164. That's 888-732-7164. I've told you often, those who don't learn from history are destined to repeat it. Take action. It's no longer a question of if it's going to happen. It's just a question of when it's going to happen. Call toll-free 888-732-7164. That's 888-732-7164. Hey, travelers, do you want to save money on your next flight? Then pick up the phone and call. That's right, call, because the best prices are not online. They're with SmartFares. See, SmartFares has special deals with the airlines. When they have unsold seats, they use SmartFares to fill them. So you get airline tickets at ridiculously low prices. Our prices are too low to publish online. With the extra money you'll save, you can book another trip or treat yourself to dinner or shopping. So stop searching all of those travel sites to find the lowest price on your next flight. Let one of our SmartFares expert travel agents find ridiculously low prices for you. Call SmartFares today and get the best price on your next flight. Guaranteed. Also, save up to 50% off business and first-class tickets. 855-325-1769. 855-325-1769. That's 855-325-1769. Do you have an old car sitting in your driveway? How would you like to learn a hassle-free way to get rid of it, help kids in need, and get a great tax donation in the process? It's real easy. One simple free call to our car donation hotline is all it takes. Call the Nishama Foundation at 800-721-6723, 800-721-6723. We'll come pick your car up for free and give you a tax donation for the full value of the car, running or not. The value of your unwanted car will go to help kids in need. It's fast and easy. Just call us and your car will be gone and on its way to helping children in 48 hours. And you get a nice tax deduction. Call the Nishama Foundation now to get rid of your car, help kids, and get a tax write-off. 
Call 800-721-6723, 800-721-6723, that's 800-721-6723. Do you owe $10,000 or more on at least two federal student loans? Then you may qualify for new programs offered by the Department of Education. These programs can reduce your interest, lower your payments, and possibly qualify you for loan forgiveness. If you have $10,000 or more and at least two federal student loans and currently not in school, you may qualify for one of these programs. Call now to check your eligibility. Student loan advisors are standing by to help you determine if you qualify for these new programs. They can help you reduce your interest, lower your payment, and even forgive a portion of your student loan debt. Take control of your financial future. Make this free five-minute free call now to Nationwide Student Loans and learn how you can reduce your student loan debt. 800-439-1588. 800-439-1588. 800-439-1588. 800-439-1588. Biz Talk Radio. sign of weakness. Always go for the throat. Buy low, sell high. Fear, that's the other guy's problem. Welcome back to the Wall Street Raw Radio Show with Mark Leibovic, your time machine for the financial markets. Want to know more? Go to WallStreetRawRadio.com. Now, here's the elf himself, Mark Leibovic. Welcome back, my good friend and always special guest, Henry Weingarten from the Astrologers Fund. Henry has been doing this for about 50 years and is an excellent stock picker using both technical and astro indicators, and uh, we always enjoy having him on the program. Good morning, Henry. Okay, but we also do fundamentals as well, which is okay. why we, like, we think we outperform. It's important to do fundamentals, technicals, and astrology. Yes, I stand okay. corrected. I stand corrected. That's okay. Anyway, the main thing going on now is the significant risk over the weekend. That uh, the market shrug during the beginning of the day was unusual because that situation in North Korea is not going away. So somewhere between the next, over the next month, we think it's going to uh, upset people more than they're being upset in the market now. So we basically went short NASDAQ over the weekend and stayed long gold for sweeping 13.25 as a pretty good support zone for us to attack 13.50 plus again. That was number one. We're happy to see oil uh, up somewhat, although we think it'll be higher as we get to next year, but it's not a straight line. Um, other than that, we're pretty much feeling the same way. The only interesting thing was if we were short Bitcoin, which we were not, we would have covered at 3000 but it's still going to go lower. I think 2500 is a better target for it, um, because we do think it's tulips, and at a certain point, people are going to wake up and say, uh-oh, but in the meantime, this is just the beginning, and it's great for traders, whether they're long or short, but it's a lot more risky being long. Uh, Jamie Dimon came out this week and thought it, uh, it was a fraud or something. He made some. Well, we agree. Comments. We think it's tulips. It's not a fraud. It's tulips. And at a certain point, when you've been selling your house for tulips, as they did in the 16th century, you find out it's worth nothing. I mean, it's, it's not being guaranteed by anything. And anyone who thinks the government's going to let them get away with the taxation after half the stuff that goes on now with fact et cetera, is just basically to get rid of uh, people avoiding taxation, they're not going to let a big, large... Uh, situation become tax free. So it's just not going to happen. And the China thing is just the first stages of it, and the ICOs are going to be another stage. So, what is it worth when it's backed by nothing? In addition to which, I think there are probably some things in there that some big, some nice Russian can pick up, you know, 10 or 20 billion by just pushing a few buttons. So, we don't trust it, and we think it's a dangerous thing, which doesn't mean you can't make money on the long side, but it's certainly the, the danger side. Well, some of the analysts were saying the pull pullback in the currencies, the cryptocurrencies, help gold short term. Well, it's hard to see what it does gold. I mean, gold is its, its, its own game, and it depends. And it's a very small market, and it's being manipulated by a lot of uh, hedge funds both ways. I'm not manipulated in the sense that uh, some people think, but just the fact it's a very small market and it's easy to move. Uh, clearly, we think it's going to continue up. 
and it's still undervalued. Our current valuation is thirteen eighty eight, so at thirteen twenty five or so, we've got another five percent as far as we're concerned. All right, Henry. That sounds great. Thanks so much. Henry Weingarten from the Astrologers Fund and uh, afund.com if you want more information as well. Thanks for joining us. Talk to you next week. My pleasure. Welcome back our very special guest, Kyle Dennis, who's the chief biotech strategist for RagingBull.com. Uh, he's an independent equities trader focused on uncovering undervalued stocks in the market. Uh, he researches stocks which are under the radar and looks for supporting data about the stocks which could foretell catalytic events. He's a director and co-founder of BiotechBreakouts.com, where he seeks to capture the biggest percentage gains. Thanks for joining us again this uh, Saturday morning, Kyle. Glad to be back. We've had a great week, a lot of great trades. Uh, it's it's your stage. What do you want to talk about? Which stocks and uh, where do you see biotech going? Well, yeah, that's what I wanted to touch base on. Uh, a lot of the trades that we've talked about have been doing very well, and that's because the biotech index, or the IDB is the ticker there, has been performing very well ahead of what's called an ESMO conference, which is a cancer conference. Now that cancer conference is over, and... So what I like to do is talk my trades, and I think the IBB is a little bit extended here, and since that cancer conference is over, I'm looking for a little bit of a pullback. I like the IBB longer term, uh, but I think that it can pull back somewhere in between the 310 to 320 range. Right now it's at about 331, 330, so just like a $10, $15 move, which is not too big. And at that point, I'd be looking for the new catalysts that are going to come up uh, one conference coming up is the big ASH conference, which is in December with abstracts for data coming out in uh, early November. The one stock I'm looking at there, maybe we can touch base more next time too, is uh, Bellicum, symbol BLCM. Uh, I'd like to always buy this on a dip. So they have some data coming out in November, and I would look to pick up shares maybe around 10, 10 50 and play that for a nice catalyst run. Gilead is still high on your list, right? Yeah, Gilead is an excellent company. Uh, we started looking at that one a while ago, but it's up tremendously at 20 bucks, and uh, I would wait for a pullback there, as I think since it's up so big that uh, there's going to be a lot of profit takers. But I do like that one longer term. I think we'll go to 100. We have about uh, 30 seconds. You got a couple picks for our listeners for the coming week, besides BLCM? Sure. Uh, I am currently uh, looking at a company, VKTS, Viking Therapeutics. They have some data coming in the fourth quarter. Uh, I think that that one's set up pretty nicely to make a short-term pop. A little small one, though. It's under a dollar or under $2. And then I also like a company, Sidara Therapeutics, symbol CDTX, which has some antibiotic news and data coming out in the fourth quarter. So I think that one can make a run-up to about 8 or $9 a share. Right now, it's about 6 or so. Kyle, really appreciate the input. Great stuff. Kyle Dennis from RagingBull.com and also BiotechBreakouts.com. Speak to you next week, and thanks again. All right. Thank you. Yeah, speaking of biotechs, of course, we don't want to forget about the uh, – medical cannabis uh, stocks as well and it's uh, not directly related but sort of indirectly related when I say that is because ultimately I think some of the big biotech uh, companies are going to end up uh, drug companies buying these uh, medical marijuana companies that are doing some terrific research, a lot of it coming out of, of Israel. Um, I know we talk about a lot of names, most of them are in, in the newsletter, but uh, I guess the big blue chip name is that GW Pharmaceutical, uh, which is about what, $107 a share. It's been trading between 30 and 130 here in the last uh, couple of years, but uh, they did get FDA approval for one of their products, and uh, ultimately they have others in the pipeline. So, you know, a big company like that could certainly be a candidate for acquisition by a company like a Gilead or some of the other you know big names in that industry. Um, some of that research is really profound, folks. It's just not uh, casual stuff. Uh, cancer uh, cures potentially, arthritis issues, uh, neurological diseases, um, you know, skin disorders, and so forth. So there's a lot of stuff being uh, a lot of research being done, and again, a lot of it coming out of Israel. So it's really something to pay attention to. Don't touch your dial. We'll be back after the break with our good friend Sinclair now. Go to WallStreetRawRadio.com for more information on Mark's newsletters and products. Stay tuned. Mark will be right back.
High-performance investors and traders use superior financial tools to achieve superior returns. You have that tool with Mark Leibovitz, nationally renowned top market timer, legendary television Wall Street Week elf, and nightly business report market monitor, who shares with you his unique market tools and commentary at WallStreetRaw.com. Here, Mark provides you with his latest ideas on how to help build and protect your wealth and help you avoid the next big market tsunami. Mark has a special free gift for listeners of his Wall Street Raw radio show. Go to WallStreetRaw.com and sign up for his free monthly Cannabis Vice News Raw report. While there, go ahead and sign up for his free monthly Gold News Raw report. Both are totally free. No credit card information is required, and no one will call. Sign up today for your free Cannabis Vice News Raw report and Gold News Raw report at WallStreetRaw.com. Biz Talk Radio is now available on Amazon Echo. Just add the Biz Talk Radio skills, then ask Alexa. For the latest business news, you instantly get live, relevant information from the best business source. Biz Talk Radio. Alexa, open Biz Talk Market Tips. Attention, hernia mesh implant surgery patients. A popular hernia surgery product has been linked to a high rate of complications and injuries. If you or a loved one had a surgery where a hernia mesh was implanted and have experienced pain, infection, adhesions, mesh migration, or product rejection, needed replacement or revision surgery, or other adverse reactions, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Time is limited to file a claim. Call now for your free consultation. Call 800-706-6897. 800-706-6897. This is an advertisement paid non-attorney spokesperson. Injury Help Desk.com is responsible for this advertisement. Principal Office, Las Vegas, Nevada. Due to an upturn in the economy, Main Street Business Loans has pre-approved the release of millions of dollars in small business funding. Your business may already be pre-approved to receive up to $250,000. We've sent out millions of pre-approval letters. We see the economy growing, and our underwriters believe now is the time to invest in your business so you can grow faster and make more money. And we're prepared to give you up to $250,000 to do it. Your funds can be available in five days. There are no application fees, no annual fees, just quick access to up to $250,000. If your business did not receive your approval letter to get up to $250,000, call Main Street Business Loans Approval Desk now. 800-430-7570. 800-430-7570. 800-430-7570. That's 800-430-7570. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now, and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now, and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules can stop the pain and get you the best deal. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who will get the IRS off your back. We saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world. Call Tax Solutions now. Time is running out. Call 800 800-979-0166. 800-979-0166. 800-979-0166. Are you struggling with a addiction or alcohol problems if you're depressed drinking and using drugs you may need help and the affordable care act guarantees coverage of substance abuse i knew i could get myself out of this i just needed some hope and some help i took the first step to recovery when i made the call call the addiction hope and helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares call 800-547-6533 800-547-6533 i feel like i'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be so 
somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-547-6533. 800-547-6533. 800-547-6533. Biz Talk Radio. Welcome back to Wall Street Raw. Want to know more about Wall Street Raw and the Leibovit VR newsletters? Go to WallStreetRawRadio.com. Welcome back, good friend and always special guest to Wall Street Raw, Sinclair No from KFNN 1510 and author of the incomparable blog, EatTheBankers.com. Good morning, Sinclair. Thank you for joining us on this fine Saturday morning. Well, good morning. Always a pleasure, Mark. Well, we have a lot to talk about, and I don't know if we have enough time to cover it all, but um, the Atlanta-based company Equifax, which is, as you know, one of the America's three giant credit reporting agencies, announced uh, in the last uh, few days that hackers had penetrated its computers and stole data for at least uh, 143 million people. Apparently, they came out late with the report, and de- delayed notifying all of us about it, and, uh, and now it appears that um, the, the ha- hackers are threatening Equifax, at least one report that I had, that they wanted to be paid in bitcoins and they want to blackmail Equifax. I mean, this is becoming a a real, real story now, not to mention the fact from what I'm reading, consumers like ourselves have to go out and try to protect ourselves now. Yeah, Um, there's just so much wrong going on here that it's ridiculous. Uh, About 143 million people apparently had their personal information exposed. Um, and apparently, by the way, this is not just unique to the, to the U.S., but apparently there are problems with uh, Equifax uh, globally as well. Now, part of this is the idea that, one, you never gave Equifax permission to have that personal information on you. Do you ever recall signing anything saying, hey, Equifax, here's my personal information? No, not that I recall, no. I just assume they, they gather it and they just distribute it at will. That's, that's my understanding. That's basically what goes on. Now, the, the breach occurred in late July, and the question behind the breach is, how did it occur? Uh, Apache Software says it's because Equifax did not apply a patch that would have uh, resolved the vulnerability issue that was breached. Um, Equifax hasn't come up with a good answer on this one yet, but uh, Apache is blaming Equifax, and and this is going to be important because there, there has to be some culpability that takes place here. And by the way, there's going to be massive, massive lawsuits involved in all of this. But not only did they know that there was a breach at the end of July, but then uh, at least three Equifax executives, including the chief financial officer, sold a couple of million dollars worth of company shares, personal shares, uh, after they learned about the breach, but before telling consumers and investors. Uh, they claim that, that uh, the executives who sold the stock didn't know about it. So I'm sure the chief executive officer is just kind of wandering around, you know, these golf clubs up in the C-suite and has no idea that there is a breach of historic proportions that has just gone on at his company. No, he didn't know anything. No, no. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't 
the topic of conversation at all in the executive suites. No, no. That, that, so that's just fraud right there. I mean, it, it doesn't take much to see through that sham and that they're lying to investors about it, that they basically lied to investors and consumers about it. So now there's all this information, 143 million Americans, and you're thinking, you know, I probably need to get my credit report and make sure that it hasn't been compromised. I probably need to put a, a freeze on my credit. That's probably a good idea, something that I should think about doing. And so you try to contact Equifax, and their website, guess what, it's frozen. You can't get through them in that thing. You try to call, good luck, it ain't going to happen. You're not going to get through. And if you do, guess what they want to do to freeze your credit? Charge you. They want to charge you for a problem that they have created. This is uh, just despicable behavior. They haven't realized the fact yet that they have culpability in this, and they're treating this as if it is not a significant problem. We really need to look at uh, if, if they are going to continue to have personal information on people, um, whether they have the responsibility, whether they have enough integrity to safeguard that. And, I mean, this should be a very high-priority item. And clearly they treated it uh, in, a, in a casual and overly relaxed manner. Uh, this is personal information of 143 million Americans. And they're just uh, lackadaisical about the whole thing. Um, this is pathetic. This is uh, pathetic. But, you know, this is what you expect from uh, a financial industry that just creates accounts out of thin air. Um, they feel as if the American consumer is a commodity and they can create accounts for you, they can say what they want to have happen to those accounts and they can take your personal information your, your birth date your social security number your home address your birth, all this information and they can control it not you uh, there's something seriously wrong with this equation, and I'm just hoping that at some point or another we can see something change. Maybe this will be the, the catalyst for change. I don't know. I, I kind of doubt it, quite frankly. I think this is eventually going to just blow over and nothing's going to happen, and they're going to continue to treat us as, uh, I, I say, a commodity. Um, really, it's better to think of it as uh, they're treating us as cattle. Or, or sheep, because that's that's about as much respect as they have for us. Sinclair, we have about a minute here. You know, the real question now: what is, what do we do as consumers? What's going to happen to us? Are we going to be compromised and find out that uh, someone's buying a car in our name? You know what I mean? This is the big issue right now for Americans across the board. And I know I tried to go in and freeze my uh, credit, and I had the same difficulty you described a minute ago. So it's going to be almost impossible. Mm -hmm. I can imagine 143 million people trying to freeze their account, right? Yeah, right. Um, it just it just isn't going to happen. Um, basically, you're 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 out in the woods and you're all alone, and the wolves are coming. Sorry, out of luck. And I, I'd like to say something happier. I'd like to say something more optimistic. But basically, um, Equifax just screwed 143 million people. Sinclair, we're going to be talking about this for weeks to come. Sinclair, no, Caveman in 1510 Phoenix, an author of the great blog, eatthebankers.com, and we'll check in with you next week, and this will be like Wells Fargo, an ongoing saga. Well, I'm afraid so. Thanks, Mark. Thank you again, Sinclair, and unfortunately, uh, that's the case. As I mentioned uh, in the interview, I did attempt to uh, go in there, and I uh, suggest you do so yourself. We're going to be printing that in our newsletter on uh, Monday, you know, so the guidelines, the addresses, phone numbers, uh, e email addresses, and so forth, to contact uh, TransUnion, Equifax, and um, Asperian to... Uh, 
freeze your account and uh, like I said it could take forever until it's actually done but this is serious it's all out there and uh, some point there could be some repercussions here so we don't know how severe they're going to be um, this is almost like an Enron event this is something you know really significant that is not really being played up on the part of the press or by uh, Equifax itself and there's probably some criminal repercussions here as well um, just a very serious event I mean I'm always nervous about having money in bank accounts and having your your credit card information out there or being, entering stuff on the internet and so forth and I know a lot of relatives of mine you know have warned me about even doing that and we do it at, for the sake of convenience and so forth but you know the, the downside is incredible here now we're seeing something blow up in a big way so this, this is the tip of the iceberg and we're going to hear more about this as this goes forward I'm afraid so just one of those things we do cover here on our Eat the Bankers or Banks Behaving Badly segment I guess we're going to have to throw Equifax into that category so don't touch your dial. We'll be back after the break with our good friend, Harry Boxer. You are listening to Wall Street Raw with Mark Leibovich. Go to WallStreetRawRadio.com for more information on Mark's newsletters and products. Stay tuned. Mark will be right back. High-performance investors and traders use superior financial tools to achieve superior returns. You have that tool with Mark Leibovitt, nationally renowned top market timer, legendary television Wall Street Week elf, and nightly business report market monitor who shares with you his unique market tools and commentary at WallStreetRaw.com. Here, Mark provides you with his latest ideas on how to help build and protect your wealth and help you avoid the next big market tsunami. Mark has a special free gift for listeners of his Wall Street Raw radio show. Go to WallStreetRaw.com and sign up for his free monthly Cannabis Vice News Raw report. While there, go ahead and sign up for his free monthly Gold News Raw report. Both are totally free. No credit card information is required and no one will call. Sign up today for your free Cannabis Vice News Raw Report and Gold News Raw Report at WallStreetRaw.com. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-595-6619. That's 800-595-6619. Again, 800-595-6619. Hi, I'm Joan London. If you're worried about your parent or loved one living alone, like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call a place for mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. Finding an apartment that was on the courtyard with the view of the trees, the view of the ducks, the stream, the creek, all of that, that was what I needed. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. Here's the number. To speak to a local senior living advisor, call a place for mom at 800-506-0320. That's 800-506-0320. A place for mom is a free service, and you can trust them to help you. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. To speak to a local senior living advisor, call a place for mom at 800-506-0320. That's 800-506-0320. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Then call Page Publishing ASAP. We're looking for authors of all types of books. And unlike most publishers, Page Publishing will take the time to review each and every book submitted to us. And we'll give you our feedback. And if we like what we read, we will get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, the Apple iTunes Store, Barnes & Noble, and other outlets. We handle everything. 
editing, cover design, copyright protection, printing, publicity, and distribution. So if you've written a novel, children's book, cookbook, inspirational work, poetry, or a biography and want to get it published, call Page Publishing now for your free author submission kit. Your road to fame and fortune could very well start with this simple phone call. 888-785-0618. 888-785-0618. That's 888-785-0618. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-521-9579 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-521-9579 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-521-9579. That's 1-800-521-9579. Again, 1-800-521-9579. Biz Talk Radio. Responsibility begins and ends with our partners and our shareholders, and that's it. There is no freedom without the law. Get it? Got it? Good. Welcome back to Wall Street Law and the final segment with Mark Leibovic. Now, here's the elf himself. Welcome back, my good friend and always a special guest, Harry Boxer from the uh, TechTrader.com. Uh, TechTrader is a live trading room featuring uh, Harry's trade alerts and technical market analysis. And, uh, of course, uh, he's the author of that great book, Profitable Day in Swing Trading, which uh, Stock Traders Almanac in 2015 coined the best investment book of the year. Harry, it's been a real busy week here, so let's talk about what's going on. Uh, gold seems to be popping a little bit. You had some nice trades. Uh, what's your pleasure well uh, you know I, this is a very volatile market i'm noticing that the real day trades the uh, phenomenal day trades like yesterday's uh big pop in uh was it uh, i already forgot the name of the stock <laughs> we had so many day trades of that right but you know i, I think uh, aldx was one and we had uh, this morning mrtx and all these biotech stocks when they pop and start to run, they take off for the week. We've seen a lot of good positive news still coming from biotech as well. So some, it's a really affecting a lot of some of our picks, like LOXO, LOXO was up, up dramatically and obviously big, big moves in the last uh, week or two and, um, you know, to, to, to take over on a couple of the big ones like Kite, which was acquired, and, and that now does talk about um, potentially, you know, Colas and a couple others being in play. IBB, which is the uh, biotech uh, ETF, looks like it uh, might have topped out a little bit short term. Do you agree or no? Well, no. I think, personally, I think just the opposite. I, I'm looking at the patterns, and I'm seeing, let me bring it up for you. Just a little pullback, nothing major. It just looks a little toppy, but I just you're the expert. I'm just asking. Well, when I look at the chart, it looks to me like a flag. Take a look at it. Mm-hmm. We went up sharply, and it's got a flagpole, and it's sitting there in a six, seven-day flag. And it's not far from resistance, so you're talking about IBB, right? Right. The IBB runs up above three, 336 and a half, seven. It could explode. Okay. F- fulfilling that flag pattern. So just look a little yep. toppy to me here. Just so I mentioned, I buy had a big mover. Just looking for a little pullback. Just thought what you thought. So meanwhile, we had some other big movers. The first solar broke out again today. That's one of your favorites. Yeah, not only that, I put a swing on it. I think at 34, it's trading in the low 50s. But more importantly, it broke out of a six-week coil pattern, and it's setting up for mid 50s, and then maybe high 62, 63. I would not be surprised to see it in the next few weeks. And the hurricane related oh, plays like uh, Generac doing well. I know she pointed that out today as well. Well, yeah, I've been talking about Generac since, since uh, about three weeks ago when it was trading in a 36.7 range, and now today it reaches high 45 and change, so it's up about nine points. 
And um, we don't want to talk about Bitcoin, but it's had a lot of volatility here uh, for those who are in that market. So uh, we'll, we'll leave that to the day when we have a, a stock or ETF we can trade. And um, yeah, we have about 10 seconds. Anything else that you want to bring to our listeners' attention that's hot? Well, just we talked about Therapix being a really neat little uh, biopharma involved with uh, ca cannabis pharmaceuticals that just started moving yesterday. I think it's due for a substantial move in the next few months. And a Bayo, A B E O, is one of my swing trades, and it's exploded from 7 8 range up to 16 17. It looks to me like it could be 20s and 30s on a stock. It's a powerful pattern. Great, Harry. Great ideas. Thank you so much. Harry Boxer from thetechtrader.com, and uh, we'll talk to him again this week. Okay, talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Harry, and it's always a pleasure having Harry on the show, and I encourage you to go to thetechtrader.com if you're looking for a lot of intraday action in the markets. One of the hardest working guys I know. Well, let's look at the markets here. We did touch briefly on the, the Bitcoin, and you know I've been talking about this for uh, over the last several months and trading back and forth. We've been using that GBTC, that Bitcoin Investment Trust, very expensive stock, you know, trading around uh, five dollars $600 a share, but we did trade it, and uh, we jumped in on the week in Bitcoin here late this week and you know made some nice uh, short-term profits there and uh, you know look at Bitcoin dropped all the way down to 2950 after being 4900 just about a week uh, oh wait, two weeks prior so uh, we had written about this and talked about that it needed a correction and we we're waiting for it to pull back um, I'm not so dire about the, the negative future for Bitcoin uh, Japan has approved it and um, this is a trend. This is something really new and developing out there. And I think, of course, the powers that be don't like the, an alternate currency. But I think that's why it was created, because indeed that's what the market needed as an alternate currency. Look at the um, marijuana space, for example, where you can't deposit cash in the bank. And many uh, firms are trying to create you know, currency that, you know, I guess a Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, we keep saying Bitcoin, but the different forms of it that allow you to do an exchange of value without actually having to put cash in the bank. But I think it's the fear of currencies in particular. And, you know, if you look over time, currencies do deteriorate in value. They eventually return to their intrinsic value, paper money. And, returns to its intrinsic value of zero, folks. Voltaire actually wrote about that in the previous century. So we, we've seen currencies way up, way down. Look at the U.S. dollar. Lost 93% of its value since the Federal Reserve was created. This is why gold has interested investors over the year, physical assets over the year, years, and now, of course, we got the cryptocurrency. So um, we, we, we can't dismiss it. I think it's probably here to stay. I'm sure the government's going to try to get a piece of the action or try to regulate it. But, uh, you know, it's around the world. I know China didn't care for it this past uh, week, and they, they proclaimed it was illegal. But we, we a lot of cross currents, but it's definitely something we got to pay attention to. So we're trading it accordingly, and I think uh, there's opportunity. Of course, the, we talked about the Winklevoss brothers, the group that was involved with uh, Zuckerberg at Facebook trying to launch an ETF for the cryptocurrencies, and the SEC turned them down. So that is coming, but uh, can't pinpoint an exact uh, time frame for that. Meanwhile, the uh, market uh, is in this September, October, and actually stretches into November time frame where there could still be some volatility here. I remember before the crash in 1987, I don't know if you go back that far, folks, but uh, market rallied into mid-September. Everything looked great, and by the time we came into early October, the first signs of that quote-unquote crash unfolded. So I don't want to be a, a bearer of bad news, but you got to keep the wits about you. And as we do each week, we close our show with our old friend Ed Hart used to say on the old financial news network from the 1980s, and we close as he did. We will know in the fullness of time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening to Wall Street Raw with nationally recognized market timer and previous Wall Street Week Alf, Mark Leibovic. If you missed any of today's show or to get in touch with Mark, please go to WallStreetRawRadio.com. Any stocks or investment discussed on Wall Street Raw are not in any way a recommendation or solicitation to buy, sell, or hold. We first recommend you seek out a licensed financial professional for advice. Go to WallStreetRawRadio.com for more information on Mark's newsletters and products.
opinions you hear on Biz Talk Radio are those of the hosts, callers, and guests, and do not necessarily reflect those of this station, Biz Talk Radio, its management, or advertisers. The information on Biz Talk Radio does not constitute a recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or securities. Please consult a professional before investing. If you have any questions about Biz Talk Radio, contact us at 817-274-1609 or at biztalkradio.com. Biz Talk Radio 